And although no one else wants to hear my voice, I can call out to this Jesus that's yeah. passing by. And Bartimaeus begins to cry out, Jesus, son of David, yeah. have mercy on me. Get this, the people that he's running with, that he's running with, has been with them all his life. They hear the same Bartimaeus, and guess how they respond to what he's saying? They respond to him by saying, this Bartimaeus, come on, man. Come on, we got a dignitary coming through town now. We got, you know, don't, don't embarrass us. Come on, just, just be quiet, you know. Everybody know everyone's okay with who you are. We'll give you something here. As a matter of fact, here's a dollar, man. Just, just whatever you do, just be quiet. And Bartimaeus, I can if you let me be Bartimaeus, I can see Bartimaeus. I don't need your money. I need Jesus. I don't need your pity. I need Jesus. And Bartimaeus begins to cry out even louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd said, listen, Bartimaeus, we're getting serious with you now. You can't see how serious we are, but you got to hear it in our voice. You better be quiet. Bartimaeus understands this is the chance of a lifetime. If I let this moment in time pass me by, who knows if it ever happens again? Who knows if Jesus ever comes this way again? And if I miss this, I may die the way I am. Instead of Bartimaeus, listen to everyone else. He couldn't see them. Thank God he couldn't see them. Because sometimes seeing people can get you distracted. So all Bartimaeus had to deal with was hearing them. And Bartimaeus made up in his mind, I don't care what you say. There's nothing that you can say that can stop me from getting in touch with Jesus. He began to call him even louder. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody else is okay with the condition that I'm in. Everyone else is okay with me living in poverty. Everyone is okay with me being sick. Everyone else is okay with me being second class. Everyone else is okay with my stuff being messed up and torn. Everyone else is okay with me being an emotional wreck. They've proven they're okay with it. And they'll be there for me as long as it don't inconvenience them yeah. too much. Yeah. I'm tired of leaning on people. Yeah. I'm, tired, I'm tired of having to beg for people to, to do this for me and be there for me and not walk out on me. And he made up his mind at that moment in time that I can't depend on people. Instead, I've got to call on Jesus. And he calls on Jesus in such a way that the Bible says that Jesus heard him. Jesus heard him. I want you to know, I don't care what your name is. I don't care who you are. I don't care what anyone has ever said about you, how they say you may be insignificant. You're nobody. You're nothing. You have no value to add. I want you to know that if you cry out to Jesus, you can have the same impact on Jesus that Bartimaeus had on Jesus. The Bible said that Bartimaeus called Jesus in such a way that it got Jesus' attention and Jesus stood still. Yes. With the whole crowd going with him, the voice of a blind man, the voice of an insignificant man, the voice of a man that no one else cared about, the voice of a man that only the only thing he contributed to society was the fact that he was a beggar. The voice of a man that no one would invite to their big to do get togethers, no one would invite to their, their birthday parties. He was just blind for a mess. No one wanted him to be on the in crowd with him. He called Jesus in such a way that Jesus stood still. And then Jesus talks to the same crowd that had thus far ignored Bartimaeus. So you have to understand what Jesus would do. He would, he would, he would use the same people who've been ignoring you to get you where he wants you to be. Good God. And so then, so then he tells the same people, he said, go bring him to me. Yeah, I know, know y'all got tired of him calling me. I know y'all didn't want, he, he was bothering you because he was hollering out loud, but it made me stand still. And he said, go bring him to me. Brings Bartimaeus, they go to him and say, be of good cheer, the master calls you. You've been calling him, but now he's calling you. I want somebody to know right here today, you may have been crying out to a God that you don't know very well. You may have been crying out to God not knowing whether you hear him, whether he hears you or not. But I want you to know today that the same God that you've been calling, he's now calling you. He's not calling you. He said, my daughter, I've seen your tears. My son, I've heard your cry. And now he's calling you and he's beckoning you now to come to him. You've gotten his attention. You now have his attention. Bartimaeus has a decision to make at this particular juncture. Now he's gotten Jesus' attention. Understand, Bartimaeus has been given a legal right to be a beggar. 
everyone understands who he is. It's all right with him being who he is. Uh, the beggars in those days, they would normally have something to identify them. Uh, we know blind people now, they have a cane with a red stripe around it. Same thing, even in those days, they had a garment that would have a, a red lining around the bottom of it that says that the government has given them a right to be a beggar. You had to have a, uh, an approval to be a beggar. But the word of God says that when Bartimaeus heard them say that he calls me, Bartimaeus, basically what he does, he takes, the cost of this is he takes the very thing that had given him the right to be down, to be who he was, that legally identified him as a beggar, which was his garment. And so then what he does when now that he's been calling Jesus, but now Jesus is calling him, Bartimaeus by faith understands that he declares in himself without anybody preaching him a sermon. He makes the decision himself and says, now that Jesus calls me, I don't need this anymore. So the Bible says he cast off his garment. Now this garment is very, very serious. But it understands with this garment. If someone get, could get your garment, then they could beg. The garment was the legal thing that gave you the right to do it. And so beggars, they took care of that garment. They didn't just get rid of that garment. But the Bible says he cast off his garment. How many of you know that when Jesus calls you, yes. you don't need what you've been. You don't need what you've been working with. You may be in the habit to do some things to compromise yourself as it relates to how you survive and how you get things done in life. You may have to lie and shuck and jive and do different things and trick and do things like that to get things done in life. But I want you to know that when Jesus calls you, you can cast off that garment. You no longer have to do things that way because now Jesus calls. He calls water man and he said, what does you want me to do for you? What is it that you need? What, what, what is it? What is it that you? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, go your way. Your faith. What faith? His faith in action. The faith that made him call Jesus when everyone else thought it was out of order. The faith that made him call him even louder when everyone that was in charge began to tell him, Bartimaeus, hold it down. The faith that once Jesus began to call him caused him to cast off his garment and come he could have went to Jesus with the garment. But how many of you know that when you come to Jesus, you don't have to come with pomp and circumstance. You don't, all you need is come with the come to him. We call it come to him naked as I am. So he cast off the garment. Said, I'm not going to him to beg. I'm not asking for money. That garment gives me right to ask for money. I want my sight. Somebody under the sound of my voice right now wants you to know that Jesus is calling you. Yes, I know you think that you've been crying alone. I know you feel that you've been crying alone and no one knows. I know you understand what I said when it seems like everyone is okay with your pain. Everyone has become okay with your day-to-day -day pain. Everyone is okay with your being there. But as you call out to Jesus, as you pray at night, and you call out to Jesus, and you've been calling out to him, and you don't even, even wonder if he's heard you, if he's heard you, I want you to know today that you're here today because he says, yes, I've heard you. And he says, yes, I've been seeing you cry. I've heard you cry. I felt your pain. Every night you thought you were alone, he says, you weren't alone. I came this way just for you. He says, yes, I came through Madison Square Mall. I came, I came just like Jesus was on a journey there. Here, Jesus is on a journey. He said, I just, I walked through Madison Square Mall just for you. And now you have my attention. And where, as up until now, you've been calling me. Now I'm calling you, saying, my daughter, my son, my daughter, my son. What is it that you want me to do for you? What is it that you need from me? I want you to know he still causes the blind to see. He still causes the hurt, the wounded to be healed. That's what he does. That's who he is. And I want you to know that this day, this very moment in time, at this moment in time, you 
have his attention. You have his attention. It's Jesus. You have his attention. Just like Bartimaeus had his attention. You have his attention right now. And he asked you the same question that he asked Bartimaeus. What is it that you want me to do for you? What is it that you need? What is it that you want me to do for you? My son, my daughter, what is it that you need? He stopped by to remind you that he loves you with an everlasting love and he wants more than anything for you to experience that love. Yes, you. Whatever your name is, he wants you to experience that love. Jesus is passing by. He's passing by. And your hearts cry you may say, well, I haven't said anything, but he hears your heart cry. He hears your heart cry. He hears your heart cry. And it is your heart cry, the tears that are no longer liquid tears, but those tears that are crying from your heart. He's hearing those. And he stopped by on this Sunday evening just to tell you, you're not calling me now, but now I'm calling you. And I'm saying, he's saying to you, my daughter, you don't have to hurt any longer. My son, you don't have to hurt any longer. You have my attention. What is it that you have me do for you? Would you stand? Jesus, I need you. Listen, I don't know exactly what may be going on in your life. I don't know what you, what caused you to cry, but He knows. Jesus, He knows. He knows. He knows. And he stopped by here this afternoon. This worship in the word. 60 minutes of worship in the word. Because he cares about you individually. And I want you to know right here today. That if you feel that you're like that blind bottom ass. And you said I just need to know that he loves me. It's so good to hear this word. And, and, and you may be saying it's good to hear the word, but, but I, I just want to know that he, he loves me. I'm here to tell you he does. He does. There's a God that loves you so much that he'll turn heaven and earth upside down to show you his love. I don't care who lied on you. I don't care who walked out on you. I come here today just to let you know that God said he'll turn our lives upside down just for you because he loves you just that much. Just that much. And I want you to know he's calling you right now. He's calling you right now. You've been calling him, but now he's calling you. Would you close your eyes? You may be listening to me right now. No one is looking but me in heaven. If you're here right now, you say, God, that's me. I'm just like that blind man. And I thank God for stopping by here today, hearing my cry, hearing my cry. If you're that blind man, you say, I feel so far away from God. I've been crying and I didn't know that he heard me. But today I hear that he's calling me and I'm ready now to respond to him. And say, here I am, God. Take my hurt. Take my pain. Take my tears. Turn my scars into stars. I want you to just slip your hand up right now and say, yes, that's me, preacher. That's me, preacher. I've been, that's me. I've been, I'm the one that's been crying. Just slip your hand up so I can see you. That's me. I've been crying. I see your hands. I see the hands right now. Most importantly, I see the hands. But what's more important than me seeing the hands is that God sees the hands. He sees your hands right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for every hand that was raised in this building right now. We thank you, oh God, for loving us enough that even as you was passing through, you stopped by Madison Square Mall in this day because you love us, oh God. We thank you for it now. We thank you, we thank you. We thank you for these daughters, oh God, and sons that have raised their hand today. Father, we pray together right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray.